Today I'll make my Reolink Wi-Fi video doorbell Wi-Fi jam proof and also show you how to run an Ethernet cable to your existing doorbell wiring and hoping you don't need to drill or cut holes onto your wall. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. When I reviewed the Reolink video doorbell a while back and I will link it down below if you haven't seen it yet, I used and still have been using the Wi-Fi version instead of the PoE or power over ethernet. And one of the main reasons is that I only have my existing doorbell wiring and it will need some planning and time to route an ethernet cable to where my doorbell wiring is. And I want it done the least invasive way because you can always drill holes in your wall to route the wire in. But I want to avoid that. Also, I have said in that video that I prefer the Wi-Fi version of the Relink doorbell because of the snapshot preview or the rich notifications, which the Wi-Fi version does have and not the PoE version. I do have to subscribe to Reolink's cloud recording to have it though, but it also uploads motion events to the cloud, which is good that I have a remote backup of my footages just in case. So in this video, I'll share my experience as to how I did it and this is just in my setup. And with yours, this might be harder to do or might be easier. Adding an ethernet cable to your existing doorbell wiring will future-proof your smart doorbell setup. And if you are building a new house, my recommendation is to add a network connection in addition to the regular doorbell wiring in your front door. All right, so my plan is to still have a doorbell wiring to power up the doorbell and just add the ethernet cable and set up the Wi-Fi version of the Reolink doorbell to have wired network connection instead of Wi-Fi. So I still have my rich notifications and I have the wired reliability and also will make this Wi-Fi video doorbell jam proof because it is set up wired instead of wi-fi the problem in my situation is that i have a brick wall and as you can see my doorbell wiring is barely fitting on the hole so my first plan is to make the hole a bit bigger or wider so that the ethernet cable plus the doorbell wiring will fit and i will not be able to use a drill to make the hole bigger because the doorbell wiring might get cut and this is the one that I'll use to pull up the ethernet cable and the new doorbell wiring up to my attic. First, I'll turn off power to my doorbell transformer or chime. And to better illustrate this, I'll show you in my whiteboard. My wall, which is brick in the front, has a small hole, just barely enough for the doorbell wire to pass through. And this wire goes up to my attic. I have a regular drywall wall on the other side, which I really don't want to mess with. What I'll do is to tape my new doorbell wiring and the ethernet cable on my old doorbell wiring and pull them up to my attic. Then I'll connect my old and new doorbell wiring and with the ethernet cable because it's already in the attic, I can easily route it to where my network switch is and connect it from there. So let's do this. From the outside, I'll first remove my relink doorbell and disconnect it from the wiring. Then I'll make the hole bigger using a punch and a hammer, slowly and carefully making sure that I'm not going to cut or mess up the wire. Then I'll tape in my new doorbell wiring to the old one and a few inches down, I'll tape in my ethernet cable to the new doorbell wiring. As you can see, I decided to use a Cat5e and this is mostly because of the overall thickness which is smaller than a Cat6 cable. Plus, they're more flexible. Then on the attic side, I'll pull up the old doorbell wiring, hoping it was not stapled onto the studs and should bring up the new wiring and the ethernet cable with it. And lucky me, it did. Now I just need to connect my old doorbell wiring to the new one and I only need to connect two, the red and the green wires. And I'll use my trusty Wago connectors. By the way, this doorbell wiring that my house builder used and also the one that I bought is for home alarms. So your doorbell wiring in your house might be just a two wire one instead of the four wire 22 gauge which I have. Now I'll just run the ethernet cable to my network switch which I'll just need to terminate and put in a RJ45 plug which I'm using my client crimper. I'll link down below my videos on the Wago and the client crimper on how to use them and you can check them out after you watch this video. Back to the front door, I'll cut both cables to length and I'll put in another RJ45 plug on the ethernet cable and plug it on the back of the doorbell and strip just the two wires, red and green, and I can screw them directly to either terminals on the doorbell, but I already have the extension wires installed, so I'll just connect them using a couple of Wego connectors. Time to power up the doorbell and see if we need to reset up. As you can see, the doorbell connected automatically to my wired network and prioritized it. We don't need to run the setup again, and I'm still getting my rich notifications. Cool. 
So now I have the perfect setup for my Reolink Wi-Fi doorbell and I'm not using Wi-Fi so it cannot be jammed. It is recording motion events to the micro SD card inserted on the doorbell itself but also streaming and recording to my Reolink and VR inside the house. But also uploading motion events to the cloud and giving me rich notifications. And that's with subscription for cloud recording, which is also a backup just in case. Anyways, hopefully you learned a thing or two, especially when dropping wires. And lucky for me, my old doorbell wires were not stapled onto the studs. And I was able to use it to pull up my new wiring. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.